everyone, it's Margaret Wallace Duffy and welcome to WOW TV's three-part hormonal health series brought to you by Rocky Mountain Analytical. Now we're very excited about this series as it's in celebration of International Women's Day. So sit back, relax and be ready to be educated, empowered on taking control of your hormonal health. Stay tuned, we've got a great show coming your way. think about it, my story isn't really that different from most of my patients that I see every day. And that really, in a nutshell, is that life did catch up with me. And it, I didn't see it coming, and I certainly wasn't prepared. I'm certainly of the personality that I go at 100 miles an hour and juggle a bunch of balls at the same time and, and make it look easy. And that worked for me very well and served me very well. It's what got me into medical school, it got me through medical school, the crazy hours of, of residency training. All that started to catch up with me and some of those balls started to drop. And the first one that I probably noticed but excused away was the fatigue and not feeling so refreshed when I woke up in the morning. Having an afternoon low, that was certainly not what I was used to. That was not my typical pattern or my energy levels. And, but again, I, I, I excused that away. I just figured, well, of course, of course I was going to be uh, tired. Why wouldn't I be up all night at work and not sleeping so great when I wasn't at work and raising two kids in, in addition to doing everything else? And, and so really sort of put it aside and, and uh, didn't think too much about it. The next ball that, that I saw drop were my moods. And um, for me, that manifested with an irritability, a, a crankiness, particularly with the kids, come flying out of my mouth before I even had a chance to get a hold of it. That was, was not me and certainly wasn't comfortable with that. I put up with that for a couple of years and not really piecing anything together, but it was when my memory or my foggy thinking started to kick in. That's when I started to wonder what more was going on. And really with that, I turned to conventional medicine, which is what I know, what I was trained to do, and couldn't come up with any explanation for what was going on. Getting to a point really more of desperation than anything, um, I had to open up my heart and my mind to other possibilities. And with that, went to see a naturopath and a traditional Chinese medicine doctor all in the same day, because that's what you do when <laughs> you're a type A personality. Both of them came to the same conclusion, and that was that I had something that was called adrenal fatigue. My mind, of course, immediately went to the extremes of disease, which are Addison's and Cushing's, and I knew I didn't have that, but I'd never heard of this adrenal fatigue, which is somewhere in the middle, and a lot of us are struggling with that. As I gained further information and collected what I needed for my own health benefits, I realized that there was a really big gap here and that it wasn't just going to be me that was struggling with this, and that I needed to make some significant changes in my life and, and make a difference for other people at the same time. And so with that, I opened up the Institute for Hormonal Health. Absolute pleasure that I have Dr. Christy Prouse, the founder of the Institute for Hormonal Health, my doctor, uh, and the chief medical officer. Now, before we actually get into your story a little bit more and talk about this, I have to read this impressive bio. Dr. Prouse has a BA in psychology, a BSc in genetics and cell biology, her MD from Queen's University. She practiced obstetrics and gynecology for 12 years, and she's the associate professor at U of T. Welcome, Dr. Prose. Thank you. I said in my piece how much I felt um, blown away and relieved when I sat across from you, because you really did make me feel like I could be empowered, and that's why we're here. And I know many women in our audience and at home um, can relate to it too. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking, you mentioned adrenal fatigue. What is it? Right, absolutely. Adrenal fatigue is a terminology that is typically used within the holistic healthcare community. And really what it's referring to is a cortisol imbalance. Cortisol is our stress hormone. It's meant to help us manage with our stress. It's produced in the adrenal glands and hence the name adrenal fatigue. Cortisol is a foundation hormone. Mm -hmm. It is really, really absolutely important to understand what's happening with cortisol. It, uh, it was really meant to help us manage with our stress. 
the problem is our systems are often on overload. Mm -hmm. uh, they were really designed for back in the day when we had the occasional stressor. Saber-toothed tiger once or twice a year, right? <laughs> there is no such thing as an occasional stressor anymore. Mm -hmm. When I talk about stressors, yes, absolutely, it's the emotional and psychological stressors. And by the way, those are additive and they're cumulative, so we're dealing with our lifetime's worth mm -hmm. of a stress in this moment. But it's also things like infections, inflammation in the body, food sensitivities, environmental toxins, which of oh. course, none of us are getting away with that absolutely. one, right? Absolutely. So because all of those things are calling on cortisol, it's really no surprise that so many of us are struggling and, and are on overload. Mm -hmm. So how does a woman know she has adrenal fatigue? What are some of the signs and symptoms? Yeah, because cortisol is such a foundation hormone and it really does impact on other hormones and other systems, uh, symptoms can present in many different ways. Uh, typically what I most frequently see at the Institute for Hormonal Health is uh, fatigue being a big thing, yes. um, and that energy pattern can show up in very different forms, but generally decreased energy. Mm -hmm. um, sleep disruption. That was me. Yeah, really yeah. huge. Uh, can impact on our moods, whether it be the irritability that I referred to, or anxiety, depression, mm -hmm. not coping in the way that you're used to coping. Right. Uh, gastrointestinal symptoms. That was me. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> All of the above. For sure. And weight management, of course, is another thing that, that uh, patients really struggle with. Those are sort of the classic presentations of adrenal fatigue. But the reality is, is it can really present in many different shapes and forms. Right. Mm -hmm. And not every woman is the same. Absolutely not. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is no question that there seems to be a, a pattern and a progression of, of how we uh, progress through these, this hormonal disruption but there's absolutely no two women are the same. And that uh, it was really important to figure out what the individual's physiology is, is really all about. And you know, I really did feel that as a patient sitting across from you, and, and that's what this series is about. Um, whether it be you or other integrative healthcare professionals, naturopaths across the country, we really do need to start this discussion and, and to delve in deeper to what is, what is happening to our bodies and not just be empowered so that we can go see our medical doctor. They have a place. It's a very important place. And we need to start that conversation with them. It's, I'm so excited. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Yeah, so, here. you know, we sat down with Dr. Gilson from Rocky Mountain Analytical a couple of weeks ago. And uh, what he had to say was very enlightening as well about his take on hormonal health from a holistic point of view. Watch this. When you're going to talk about hormonal health, I think we have to back up a step and, and th just remember what medicine's all about. We have to remember that our bodies aren't just a collection of organs that happen to you know, share the same space, but also that everything works together as a system. And so we have to treat everybody from that standpoint. And, uh, and then our treatments as well can treat people from many different angles as well. So the testing is, is an important part of it. but. You've got to start by looking at the whole picture and looking at all the organ systems. I think we've forgotten a little bit of that now in the way we go at medicine these days. So when we say taking a step back and we talk about holistic medicine, what does that actually really mean to someone like you who's both a doctor as well as somebody that's really been pioneering in the field of of holistic health. Well, how's your skin? And if your skin's not good, what, what's behind that? Well, maybe there's something going on with your liver. And why, why is that joint aching? Well, maybe you're not eating the right foods. Maybe you should eat some cartilage. You know, how's your hair? Well, maybe that's maybe if your hair's not the best way it should be is maybe it's your thyroid gland. So looking at the person, taking a good history and a physical, you know, like Sir William Osler said many years ago, ask your patient, and they'll tell you the diagnosis. So just gathering a lot of information about every aspect of the person or one particular complaint and okay, let's give you a treatment for that specific symptom. You, you gotta look at the constellation. Now would you agree that patients need to be aware of what's going on in their own body and therefore be able to contribute um, to giving information to their doctor or medical team? You know, I always used to ask my patients, well, what do you think's wrong? And sometimes they look at you like you have three heads, but then come to find out, well, they think they have cancer or, you know, you, you, have, to, you have to solicit the patient's ideas about what's wrong. You have to empower patients to, to be able to, to say, yeah, I've got that wisdom. I know what's, I feel it in my bones, this is what's wrong with me. Yes. So absolutely, you have to get people to tell you what they think. And, you know, you have to question them in a way that they can, you can get that information out of there, but. So let's take a trip to the grocery store with Thena Scropo, the healthy Italian, to stock our pantry. Hi, 
Hi, I'm Fina Scropo. I'm the author of The Healthy Italian Cookbook. And today we're at Lady York shopping for some great pantry items to help our hormonal health. Now, some of the great things that you can find in a pantry, of course, are healthy carbohydrates. Now, we need carbohydrates because, of course, they help us fuel our body. Um, of course, we want to choose smart carbs, not wrong carbs. Wrong carbs, obviously, like refined flours, white bread, white pastas, will spike our blood sugar levels, increase the insulin in our body, and insulin will help us, or not help us, store fat where we don't want it to be stored. So let's shop for some healthy carbohydrates. Of course, we've got things like uh, uh, some quinoa, we've got some healthy grains like oats and oat bran, as well as some brown rice. I love fado, which is sort of like a, it's an emmer wheat, and it's great, oh, here we are. Um, it's an emmer wheat um, that I use in stews and in pastas and in salads. And one of my favorites that uh, doesn't get enough attention is barley. And the reason why I love barley is because it actually is one of the grains that has one of the lowest GIs. So it's low on the glycemic index. And what that means is that it's the carbohydrate that gets slowly absorbed into the body so that we sustain our blood sugars, they're stable, and it doesn't sort of spike our blood levels so we're not craving food uh, those odd times when our blood sugars um, are going up and down now um, one of the things i love about oats is that um, they are so versatile and i use them in a really unique way i use oats in of course baked goods where they add some moisture like in my lemon polenta cake my chocolate tort um, and as well i use them believe it or not to replace breadcrumbs in my Sunday meatballs and in my meatloaf. They add an enormous amount of moisture and flavor without the dryness of, say, adding breadcrumbs. So um, as you can see, there's a lot of great carbohydrates that we can access from the pantry. So don't miss this aisle when you're shopping the next time. Thank you, Dr. Gilson and The Healthy Italian. So we're back here with Dr. Prouse, and now that we've talked a little bit about adrenal fatigue and what it is, there's a huge fallout from having this. Can we speak a little bit to that, and, and where do we begin? Yeah, well, it's why I kept referring to cortisol as a foundation hormone, uh, really because if you don't get that particular hormone figured out and straightened out, you're gonna have a great deal of challenge balancing the other hormones. As a foundation hormone, some of the other hormones that it impacts and other system that it impacts um, are things like the thyroid gland. You've got mm -hmm. cortisol issue, you've got to look at your thyroid gland. If you've got thyroid issues, you definitely have to look at cortisol. The two are very intimately tied together. One of the other things that starts to uh, be impacted is estrogen and progesterone, which of course are hormones that we typically associate with the perimenopausal time frame or the menopausal time frame. If you've got an issue with cortisol, mm -hmm. it's only going to undermine any imbalance that already exists in those areas. Mm -hmm. Cortisol also uh, can impact on the gastrointestinal tract, right? Yeah. You can fly under the radar for a very long time and not know that you've got issues with maldigestion, malabsorption, dysbiosis in the gut, which is an imbalance between the good and the bad bacteria, um, before even manifesting with obvious gastrointestinal tract and symptoms. In fact, by the time you manifest with obvious GI symptoms, the system's already gone right off the rails. That tends to be a cortisol issue, mm -hmm. right? It is creating that malabsorption, uh, maldigestion. It is creating uh, what is called a leaky gut syndrome or to conventional medicine, intestinal hyperpermeability, which sets you up for uh, food sensitivities, which again, calls on cortisol. And so right. it's important to um, understand what people's food sensitivities are as well. When the gastrointestinal tract isn't functioning optimally, one of the food complexes that our body's gonna have the greatest difficulty breaking down and absorbing are the amino acids. And our amino acids are the building blocks for our proteins. Proteins make many, many things in our body, mm -hmm. right? And so if fundamentally we're short on our amino acids, we're gonna have difficulty making any of the proteins. Where we typically see that um, present is with mood, mood disruption. Right. And uh, sleep disturbances. <sighs> yes. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And muscle development. Okay, so when a woman walks into your clinic or across the country into, into their healthcare professional's office, um, knowing all of this, where do you start in terms of diagnosis? Yeah, first of all, as, as Dr. Gilson referred to in, in his segment, it is absolutely essential that you get a very detailed 
history and, and physical examination, what is actually going on with the patient. And uh, that is a really very helpful guide in directing your attention as to where you need to investigate. And doing that early, I think it's so important to have a baseline. You just said something that really resonated with me, and that is we can really push along without it manifesting for a very long time. But the key is, it is manifesting. Absolutely. And therefore, having that baseline for your doctor to have so that when things do come up, you've got something to compare it to, it's very important. Absolutely. Yeah. So with uh, diagnostic uh, testing, which we are going to go to a clip shortly about, um, you know, there are different ways to test. Can you speak very briefly to that? Oh, there are many ways to look at hormones. There's no question about that. There are definitely some uh, testing methods that are better than others depending on the particular hormone that mm -hmm. you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So you can use saliva, you can use urine, you can use hair samples, you can use blood, right? So there are differently, definitely different ways that it can be looked at. Uh, when we're talking about cortisol, well, really there are, are two main ways that I typically look at it, and that's not only in saliva but also uh, in urine. Mm -hmm. yeah. And that's not typical, that's not necessarily something that a conventional medical doctor, um, although you are one, yes. <laughs> but that doesn't practice integrative medicine, mm -hmm. would not necessarily do. They, often women are coming into your office and they've had blood tests, yeah. correct? Yes, if, if cortisol is being considered as a possibility in the first place, mm -hmm. which um, often doesn't happen, and that's simply because in conventional medicine we just we recognize the extremes of disease. There is this middle ground um, that is causing problems, there is a physiologic consequence of of cortisol imbalance that is impacting us. Um, yes, you can check cortisol in blood work. There are always pluses and minuses to um, every test that you do. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a classic example where you can get uh, perhaps better information using saliva or cortisol. Great, thank mm -hmm. you. Well, we're gonna be back to talk about treatment. But right now, we're gonna throw to a click so that you can have a look at the testing process that you might go through if you were to see a practitioner like Dr. Prowse. My name is Stephanie. I'm the patient care coordinator here. So what I do is I get you organized with any testing that Dr. Prowse has recommended for you today. Okay, um, so we're going to start off with the saliva test that she has recommended for you. So with this saliva test here, you are collecting four saliva samples in one day. On the day that you do this test, you are going to avoid caffeine and vigorous exercise on this day. Okay, just okay. that day? Just this day. Okay. Your instructions are always inside the box, so please review them before you start the testing kit. This is your requisition form that you will fill out on the day that you actually do the test. Okay. okay. So on this day, you're going to be collecting four saliva samples. Okay. You're going to collect one when you wake up, okay. one before your lunch, one before dinner, and one before bed. Okay. okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to take a tube and you're going to simply spit inside of it. You're going to keep spitting until you reach just over halfway. Once you are done collecting the saliva sample, you're just going to fill out the information on the label and you're going to put the tube in the freezer. Okay. So at the end of the day, you'll have four frozen saliva samples. The next day, you can just put them back inside the bag and you can put them inside the box and you can ship them out. Okay. Dr. Victoria here today to talk a little bit about something I think that we've all experienced at one time or another, low energy, feeling burnt out. Now the good thing is, is that we're usually able to bounce back pretty quickly after a little bit of rest and relaxation. But the problem lies where some people constantly feel tired, low energy, and it never seems to go away. This is something that many practitioners term adrenal fatigue. And what adrenal fatigue can be is a list of symptoms like low energy, feeling lightheaded or dizziness, maybe even um, an overuse or abuse of stimulants like caffeine, so coffee, energy drinks, colas, just to keep your energy levels up. So what can we do about this? Well, definitely, if you're feeling any of these symptoms, you wanna be checked out and assessed by a licensed and registered healthcare practitioner, be it a naturopathic doctor or even your medical doctor and especially a medical doctor that's trained in integrative health care because they will be able to approach this adrenal fatigue picture in a natural way. We look at different lab testings to make sure that you've ruled out any other underlying issues like thyroid concerns or nutritional deficiencies. And we can look at things such as cortisol levels which can help us address and, and see if there is any impairment in adrenal function. So treatment can include dietary changes, definitely looking at what you're putting into your body that can be stressing the adrenal glands, looking at um, cutting down on some of that stimulant use. So 
decreasing the caffeine intake because that does over a long period of time actually stress the adrenal glands even more. From a supplement or herbal approach, we look at a variety of different herbs that are known as adaptogens. They actually do help strengthen the body's actual natural resistance to chronic stress and do allow the adrenals to function optimally again. So these can include anything from licorice root, rhodiola, ashwagandha, and something that's more commonly or well-known like ginseng. So just making sure that um, you do see a qualified healthcare practitioner that knows how to use the right supplements for you. Welcome back here in studio. I'm so excited to be sitting beside one of our treasured Wallace for Wellness practitioners, Amy Hayes, who's a registered dietitian. Welcome, Amy. Thank you so much for having me. We're thrilled to have you. But of course, we also have another member here, Paul Wright, our social media guru in our hub. What's happening out there in social media world? Well, hello, ladies. Uh, it's great to be here. And we're just thrilled with the response we've been receiving on social media through Facebook and Twitter. Now, remember to uh, join the conversation and join our social community using the hashtag WowTVHealth. Now, one of the questions that just came in uh, not too long ago was from Sarah. Can a nutritional cleansing affect our hormones? You're a great person to answer that question. Amy, take it away. Well, and you know what I think, Mark, it all comes back to your liver. And so I think it's first important to understand just what the liver does. Mm -hmm. it, it completes over 500 jobs in our body. It's quite the multitasker. Anything from um, uh, regulating cholesterol levels, digesting our food, cleaning our blood, mm -hmm. and regulating our hormones. Right. So anything we can do to love our liver, right. including eating the right nutrients, right. is going to help our hormonal health. And it is Healthy Liver Month, so this is really timely. Absolutely. And when it comes to, very briefly, just a few items that, in terms of nu nutrients to help cleanse, what would you sure. suggest? I, you know, we all know that vegetables are good for us, right? Um, but ones that contain sulfur, such as cabbage, broth, broccoli, cauliflower, onions, garlic, great for the liver. Fantastic. You know, it's just the tip of the iceberg. Mm -hmm. We could spend days, but thank you for joining us. It's uh, really wonderful to have you. Thank you for having me. Now we're going to actually head out and talk about the physical impact that uh, can play in stress. We're going to see Michelle talking a little bit about fitness. You know, when we think about stress, uh, stress is like the fight flight response. So it's beneficial if someone is holding a gun to your head, then the body needs to respond appropriately in order to be able to react. When we're under huge amounts of stress, what happens is the body releases uh, adrenaline and alongside of that cortisol. Cortisol then pumps sugar into the bloodstream, and of course it gives us the ability to then fight or flight. Now, in the days when we needed to escape from predators, or if we're you know in that situation where someone's holding a gun to our head, then obviously that's important and it's relevant. But what's happening is is that our lives these days are, are stressful all the time. So, if it's a temporary release of cortisol uh, and adrenaline into the system, then that's okay. But a prolonged uh, releasing of these chemicals into the body creates havoc um, where we start to see a breakdown in the natural biochemistry of the body uh, so it can impact our hormones um, it can impact our mental health it can strip us of our joy uh, it can strip us of our uh, mental functioning and ability to cope with everyday things so stress is something that um, is hugely critical in overall health and learning how to manage more effectively well, a great quote that comes to mind is by the philosopher William James. And um, William James said that our greatest weapon against stress is the ability to choose one thought over another. And when we think about stress, it's really about our internal interpretation or perception of what is happening that really turns an event into a stressor or not. So the first thing that we want to be able to do is learn mastery over our thoughts. Is what we're thinking about turning something into a stressful situation or is it turning it into a situation where we feel empowered by what's happening, where we feel like we have the power to shift and change the circumstances. So the first one is, is managing our thinking. We need to first become aware of what we're thinking. Most people aren't aware of that constant noise and activity. When we become aware of those thoughts, uh, then we're in a position to choose what thoughts we wanna have. 
It's also important that we identify what the stress triggers are in our life. So what are the things that when they occur cause us to have the type of thinking that throws us into a negative kind of downward emotional spiral to the point where we feel like uh, life is out of control. And when we can create that relationship, then that not only empowers us to have a different internal representational response to the trigger, but also allows us to maybe make decisions about those stressful triggers themselves. Uh, do we need to continue to participate in that, that trigger? Can we remove it somehow? Or do we really need to just accept and adapt to that trigger? studio with an addition to our panel, Michelle Armstrong from Aura Studios and a transformational specialist, and Ashna Starrett, who is a holistic healthcare practitioner with a doctorate in holistic medicine. Welcome, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. So when we're talking about treatment, and you know, there are endless possibilities, and every woman is different, where do we begin, Christy? Yeah. The way that I like to think about it is really the leaky bucket phenomena. And, uh, as the leaky bucket, we have holes in our bucket and we need to plug those at the same time as we're filling up so that we can fill up faster. When I talk about that leaky bucket, it's the stuff that we referred to earlier. It's the emotional and psychological stressors. It's the infections, it's the inflammation in the body, food sensitivities, um, environmental toxins. Uh, but really, on so many levels, it really is about the mind, body, spirit connection. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So whereas my focus tends to be a lot on the, the body, um, and there are others that have their area of expertise as well. And that's why we put this panel together. So when we're talking about other areas of expertise, Michelle, when you're talking about the mind connection and when we're talking about stress, we saw in your clip the impact yeah. that our thoughts can have. Can you just expand on that a little bit? Yeah, I mean, I think, you know, we're all becoming more and more aware about how powerful the mind-body connection is. And when women are going through the hormonal challenges that they are, they're often feeling very helpless and do not realize the power that they have to affect their own treatment and healing. And so one of the things that I like to talk about is the power of our thoughts and our belief systems and how those thoughts and beliefs are impacting us uh, chemically and how they can even affect cortisol, mm -hmm. which is, you know, as Dr. Prowl said, is that foundational hormone that then affects all the other hormones. So I think when we can realize that we have a part in our own healing by shifting the way that we think, it raises our hope and it raises our ability to heal much more quickly. Thank you, and so eloquently said. Thank you. Now, Ashna, you play in a very important role at the Institute for Hormonal Health. What, what is exactly do you do to help patients? So I, I work with various therapies, and the therapy um, that works best with hormonal is issues and stress management is uh, the bioenergetic therapy. Mm -hmm. So I use this in two ways, working with the physical body and finding intolerances that's been built up through stress, and we rebalance those. Mm -hmm. And the, the second is working with the emotional, um, the emotional negativity that's built up with various um, issues and events through life. And we um, use a bioenergetic therapy to de-stress the body, um, bringing it healing. Yeah. You know, that's so powerful. And you it know, is. I think a lot of women out there don't even know that these are options for them. And mm -hmm. every woman is different, and every treatment plan needs to be different and specific to them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, ladies, I really want to thank you for your expertise and your energy. I know you've got so much more that you can give. And the good news is that for all of you at home watching, you can reach out to whether it's one of our panels here or some doctors across the country. You want to link arms with your healthcare professionals and take a part of this journey for your health and well-being. We have so many people to thank for this series. First of all, a huge shout out to Rocky Mountain Analytical who's made this possible and all kinds of great giveaways for our audience and yes, in cyber world and Listen Up Talk Radio. That's right, we've got an after show where you can have your voice heard and your questions answered. So make sure you tune in to the rest of the series in celebration of International Women's Day. Isn't that awesome? International <laughs> Women's Day. So on behalf of the WOW TV team and these wonderful practitioners, be well and we'll see you next time.